Okay, this is the next firing and I've made a little temporary door to the top of the firebox to stop the cold air rushing in the top and through so it mainly has to go through the fire but we've just got a few sticks on this and Owen sent me a pyrometer that's from the channel Boots Owen and look 81 it's just cooling down the touch because it went up to uh, nearly a hundred within five minutes but of course that is the air temperature not the pot temperature so we need to really go very slowly and we've got a special person here to do the stoking one of my uh, fellow students say hello Fran Hello, Fran. <laughs> so she's looking after this assiduously <laughs> which is great because I think we just need to keep this letting the pottery or the ceramics warm up real slow I think last time we got up to 180 degrees probably within quarter of an hour and that is too quick or from what I've been told it's too quick so thank you for Owen for supplying this uh, pyrometer and we're just going to give it a go so I will get back to you when we get something slightly more interesting happening yeah. 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 so it's half an hour and we're on a hundred degrees and I wanted to see what the temperature was actually of the one of the pots in there Forty five degrees. But that's brilliant because we're just we're uh, building a lot of heat slowly. So it's an hour virtually, fifty minutes. We've got a bit of a bigger fire, but this door seems to make quite a lot of difference. And the air temperature in the kiln is where are we? 205 so let's just go and check the temperature with the infrared probe interesting that pottery now has gone up to 135 hopefully you see that so the heat is being transferred into the pottery and the kiln earlier on there was a huge difference between air and pottery temperatures they're starting to sort of move closer and I'm assuming at some point within the next hour that they will come together and then we can start really boosting the temperature so maybe that's it you've got to get the pottery the same temperature as the air in the kiln before then you can really start pushing the temperature up because the temperature in the kiln is staying really quite stable now so before that temperature was fluctuating quite dramatically and it wouldn't take much for the temperature to go down now it's sort of there I'll keep you posted again okay this is interesting we got the fire going a bit more it is 296 in the kiln itself let's just see what the uh, infrared's doing there's the portal right. this is getting interesting where are we inside that mug there 305 
That's brilliant. So we're starting to learn something there. Before the air temperature was more, now the ceramics have absorbed that heat and we're on one hour and uh, one and a quarter hours. No, perhaps a bit more, one hour and 20 minutes. And we're to 300 degrees in the, the pot. Now, I want to leave that for another 20 minutes or something just for it to naturalize and then we'll just then what we'll do is we will just bring the air temperature up a bit on that um, pyrometer we'll bring it up to say 350 and then wait for the pots to catch up so that's the plan we're making it up as we go along as normal so I've taken the the damper off the front of the firebox and we're really sticking lots of timber in there getting it roaring away and I'm just going to move the camera so we've got the pyrometer at 468, 400, 470 so that's going up so let's have a look at the infrared Six hundred. So that's um, quite interesting. So now we've got the pottery temperature rising above the air temperature. Interesting. Six hundred. We've only got another three hundred deg degrees to go. Yeah, amazing. And there's no loads of smoke coming out anywhere. And let's just have a look at the chimney. So I'm halfway putting the roof on this thing, but that chimney is burning super clean. No smoke at all. All we've got is heat haze coming out of there. Brilliant. Absolutely superb. I've just taken a reading and it's 700 degrees in there now on that particular pot there not long to go so this is three and a half hours of firing and we are on 840 so we're getting there so I've got a couple of pieces in there that have got a low fire glaze on them so it wants to go at least another 100 degrees so it's four hours I put the baffle back on and I've stoked it up and the uh, the kiln is full of flame so let's just go and have a look we're nearly there 929 Another 10 minutes I think and that will be enough, bearing in mind we've got those uh, glazed pieces in there. There we go, just down the edge of that brick there, that is really quite toasty in there. Mm. 
940. Nine sixty six. We're awful close. I actually think that might just do it. Right, it's the next day. Just slightly warm. It's quite windy, so you're gonna have to put up with wind in the camera. I'm going to have to do something about this this piece here. It needs to be better. A lot better. As you can see, with all that black, it was leaking quite a bit. Even though we sealed it with clay, I think we need to seal between here. Or even better, I think make some uh, fire brick panels. Okay, next thing is the use of the pyrometer. Absolutely brilliant. Really good. It helps in that initial stage quite dramatically. As you've seen, yeah, the, the air temperature is a lot higher than the pot temperature and so therefore that allows you to regulate the fire to keep it quite low for, for a reasonable length of time yeah, until the pot temperature is equal to the pyrometer temperature or the air temperature then the next thing is the, the pyrometer was here and I think there was a point where this particular bit of kiln wasn't getting as hot as the rest. And I had a brick down, down there uh, as a sort of baffle for the top half of the, the fire. And I think that was a bad move. So in the end I sort of pushed it out of the way and and then the air temperature around here came up quite a bit so there you go so let's have a look not bad a little crack there whoa another one pretty good but a little crack there ah that's cracked. That's a bit disappointing. That one's alright. So I don't know why that bigger one cracked. There we go. I'm quite pleased with that. Yeah, those um, rubber block stamps are absolutely rubbish. There's n you have to be you have to spend a lot of time aligning everything. Now that's interesting. Hopefully you can see that that half, which was next to this half, is a different colour. Perhaps not. Oh, slightly. I see it as a different colour. That's really disappointing that that one has cracked, and I don't know why. Let me just move this lot out of the way.
side, knock this up out of some odd bits and pieces as a kiln shelf and it seems to have worked. Right, let's have a look. This is one of Fran's pieces and she said it was cracked there. Perhaps the holes are a little bit close together but that's fired all right. Yep. Ah right, okay. We're going to have a closer look at these later on but that is the Tetford Yellow with the home home clay as a slip. I'm reasonably pleased with that. And Fran was thinking this would fall apart and it hasn't. right at the front there Whoop. but that crack was there already so it's not cracked any further but I'm pleased with that one it's not I'm not sure it's how I imagined it but Andy Ward of the ancient pottery he said this would fire red and he's certainly right That is weird. And that. And this is the horse's head. And there's a couple of bits of frams here. A maker's stamp and some little discs. So we got the horse's head. I'm not sure what I make of that. It's definitely got some carbon on it at the front there. And these ones, that was supposed to be Mako um, low flyer matte transparent. And it isn't. Now, we got up to 960 was that not enough? It doesn't look like it's melted, does it? Which is a bit. And then this other dish, this was the one that was, uh, let me guess, this is the one that was cracked across the base, um, but not up the sides, and now there's a crack up the side there. So, there you go. Uh, more things to learn. Well, I'm pleased that the, the dragon's head is at least in one piece, but um, I've got to learn more about glazing. I don't know anything really. So I was just having a go at this Mako low fire mat, and it hasn't. So, anybody who knows, did we not get up to a high enough temperature? It's supposed to be a thousand degrees or 990. Does 960 to 993 make a difference? Well, it looks like it does. And Fran's pieces here, little essays in surfaces. I know the wind's in the camera and a maker's stamp. Okay, I don't think we need to see any more. There's the other ones down there. Those uh, dishes are a total failure. Some of the mugs are great. The wordy pieces I'm very pleased with. That one that split was split before I put it in there. 
and I'm going to mount that on a board and I'm not going to do any more with it so it's just going to be like an ancient piece of found tablet or something like that mounted on a board right hopefully you've put up with the wind in the camera and um, comments please yeah, comments concerns just general discussion that would be great um, and I will catch up with you very soon and we had a wonderful day had various people drop in and Fran of course was here most of the day helping with uh, just stoking it and just being company. Cheers for now.